When I think about creating a great piano patch, I immediately think about creating something that I can use for a variety of scenarios, something that sounds very good for traditional piano playing, something that sounds very good in the high end, something I can do bass note hits or something a little more rock and roll. We're very used to the idea of a pretty classical sounding piano that if you sat down and played Beethoven or Mozart or Rachmaninoff, if you're into that, uh, it would sound pristine and, and beautiful. I go for something a little a, a little dirty or something a little more dark and mid-rangey. And what I found is in live, uh, in live music especially, which is what most of us are going to be doing, it ends up filling a very different niche. And so what you're going to find is it sounds very... Sounds cool, and you're definitely going to go, wow, I wonder how that happens, but it's a, little, it's a little different. It's not quite as pristine and beautiful, and there's this kind of a specific way you can go about uh, doing that. So real quick, if I were to play uh, a chord, one of the things you're going to notice is that the piano sustains out forever. It's still gone. It's a little bit quiet, but it's still gone. which if you're sitting at an acoustic piano by itself, you uh, definitely hear that, but it's something that's pretty rare when you pull open a patch. This is accomplished through, through a few different things, but you're gonna find that as I play this, uh, the way it switches uh, different tones and timbres and stuff like that is a little more intuitive than what you might be traditionally used to with a piano patch. Now, let me, uh, let me tell you what I mean by that. When you're working with a keyboard or sample-based piano, what's happening is the computer is looking at a set of parameters and saying, you know, and inside a keyboard is a computer, and is saying, play these specific audio files uh, in this way. So somewhere, someone actually recorded a piano, whether it's a Yamaha C7 or, uh, or whatever it is, there was a mic'd up piano, and someone's sitting there hitting piano notes at various different velocities, uh, and then the computer kind of is intelligently playing those back. What you'll find is velocity switching becomes a problem, where uh, especially on older keyboards like the old, uh, let's say, like the Roland X. P50s and 60s back in the day that had really distinct velocity switching where you'd be playing and all of a sudden it'd go, it would just switch. You'd have a soft sample and then it goes straight to a hard sample. It's getting a little bit better, but one of the things is as those transitions happen, there are ways to smooth that out and make that process feel more natural. Now, let me play at a couple different velocities and you're going to hear that the volume doesn't really change. The volume stays the same, but the tone changes. And kind of listen to what it's doing and I'm going to show you why that's cool. So I'm playing at kind of a, a low velocity right now, right? Very lightly. And as I pick up the velocity, it's going to still be that same volume. If I really lay into it, it still stays at that same uh, that same level. And what happens is that this patch now becomes really useful in a lot of different ways. Because if I play really quiet up high, it cuts through the mix because it's that kind of same volume, and it sustains forever. If I play down low and I turn the velocity up. It now turns into a rock and roll patch. Like, it's a really versatile patch, and this is accomplished by using compression for the most part. Uh, compression is, in a nutshell, it's a way to mess with the dynamics of a sound. It is a way to process the sound so the way the attack, how the sound opens up, and the way it releases, you can kind of mess with. And so what's happening is when I hit a piano, if I hit a note on the piano, uh, it starts loud and kind of decays out. And what a compressor does is it will essentially take the loud part in that beginning of the sound and kind of squash it down. And then so the sound is a lot more even. And then you take all of it and gain it up. So if you're recording it, it looks a lot more like a block of sound. And that's kind of what's happening. So I have open, I'm using software to uh, play all my samples. And this is a patch I made in Reason. It's available on multitracks.com. It's called Real Piano. And basically what's happening is I am using compression to really dramatically, uh, really dramatically change that kind of volume level on the sound. So if I take it off, you're going to notice the sustain changes a lot. And so I'm going to kind of A-B this real quick. And it gets more and more dramatic as I turn it up.
And if I were to crush this compressor and just kind of over compress it, you can really hear it then, but the sustain's never gonna go away. So what's happening, again, if you think of it in terms of a waveform, loud part, quiet part, the quiet part now is as loud as the loud part. I'm playing really quiet right now. You can't see like the velocity I'm playing at, but I'm playing really quiet and, and you can't really tell. What's interesting about the compression though is it really changes the way you can play the piano and lay into it. Let me give you a, a, a really easy example. I'm going to play uh, a couple of high notes and then I'm going to go in and start laying into the piano. I've turned the compression off. <laughs> I've now turned the compression off. And listen to what happens as the volume changes. It starts out really quiet. It's hard to hear the high notes. And as we get into the laying into it, the volume changes dramatically. peaking this actually we're distorting now there you go that's better so you can hear the volume change there it's a uh, it's pretty dramatic and if I turn it back on now Uh, all the volumes are about the same. And the reason this is advantageous is because when you're playing on a band, uh, in a band on a stage with real instruments and stuff and going through uh, and people are singing and there's people in the crowd and there's ambience in the room and whatever else, you're not going to hear uh, nearly as much of those subtle frequencies and the, the, the notes that you're really wanting to hear when you're playing the piano. Like when, what you associate with an acoustic piano, which is that kind of feeling and that sustain and the cool stuff that's going on, you don't notice any of that when the whole band's playing. All you hear is ding, 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 ding. And, you know, and you really hear, it, it's actually fascinating. You hear it all over uh, really huge uh, concerts and performances uh, from a lot of top 40 bands where the pianos live just sound weird. They start sounding really plinky and strange, just ding, 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 ding. And, you know, no one really wants that. And the reason is when you're in the studio and you're recording a piano, an engineer or the mix engineer later, like, really knows all of this stuff and knows how to get that tone out of it to get it to sound a certain way. And live, we just pull up and patch 000 and go for it. And so what you want to do is modify it to where uh, you have more of what's going on in the studio. And the real simple way is to mess with compression until you get something that sustains a lot and is a lot more musical. I also would recommend starting with a set of samples that is a little bit darker than you might associate normally for the same reasons. We don't necessarily need to have a lot of stuff sparkle and shine through when there's a snare drum and overheads and guitars. That frequency range that we associate with sparkly cool piano for the most part is useless when it comes to 90% of what we're doing on a Sunday morning. That's how I approach piano. I go darker, I heavily compress it, and it allows me to play a variety of different styles uh, in different kind of moments. Again, with the idea that now uh, one piano patch is potentially as useful as having five or six or seven. <laughs>